We have the incomparable Najee, an incredibly musician, human being, and he's going to not only talk about his music, he's going to talk about Najee the man. I want you to sit right there, don't move, get ready for a dynamite interview with a dynamite man, Najee. Let's hit it. Welcome. Yeah. Nice uh, this is great. And this is the first time I've been to a sound check and uh, get a chance to see the musicians in action getting set up. This is, this is like wonderful. Do the same thing we have to do. Check the right. mics and make sure everything, the levels and all that. Tell me one thing. I've been wondering, and, and I know your name has a meaning. Could you yes. tell us the, the meaning of Najee? Well, the, the Arabic translation means uh, friend of the creator or confident of almighty God is what, the, what it literally means. Now, how has that changed or altered in a positive way your self-perception? Well, I think uh, I strongly believe in the Creator, you know, God of all people, all things. And um, that perhaps is the biggest, uh, you know, thing that's altered my perception. You know, I believe that what I do is a gift, you know, and not to be taken for granted. Absolutely. And that, uh, you know, life is precious, you know. Right. So for me, the perception, if to be altered, if you will, as you say, um, has been altered by that, you know, by, by belief in God. I've thought sometimes about changing my own name, but really? it's like I've been called Herb so long, <laughs> you know, to get other people used to that. Well, you know, in high school, how, long, how long have you been well, Najee? Well, Najee is my middle name, well, actually, middle name. but if you go home to my hometown, people will still call me, yo, Jerome, yo, what's up, man? Yo, you made it large, you know, you do. <laughs> right, you know, right. But Najee is my middle name. I've been going by my middle name uh, as a first name for the last... 20 years now. As being a Muslim, I'm taking a little liberty here and I'm making an assumption that you are health conscious. I know I'm very health conscious. As much as I can be. Okay. <laughs> you know, I watch what I eat. You probably have certain dietary restrictions and so oh, forth. Sure. Uh, I don't have to also tell you that within the black community, there's a lot of problems, health related problems, yes. and most of them are directly associated with food yes. consumption, the wrong kinds of food and too much of it. Yes. Uh, I'd like for you to just share with uh, some of your fans out there, you know, what your position is on that and some of the things you do yeah. well I, it's it's kind of difficult for me because uh, you know I travel a lot and sometimes the foods I would want to eat are not always available you know I, I'm not really a heavy meat eater you know I don't eat a lot of meat I do have beef occasionally you know uh, well yes I try to eat you know healthy you beef yeah you know I don't try to eat uh, I don't eat hamburgers anymore you know I found that I didn't enjoy that and you know, I didn't like the way it made my system feel. Right. So when I can, yes, I try to eat uh, what we call halal meat, you know, which is uh, uh, the animal is slaughtered a different way than the slaughtering houses we have here, the common slaughtering houses. So, um, and also the name of God is invoked over the, the meat as it's slaughtered. Uh, but that's not always available. So I try to be practical, you know. Um, I wish I could say I was a strict this, strict that, but I'm not. I don't eat pork, obviously. Right. You know, that's the worst meat anyone can eat. Okay. So, so. Obviously, you cook on the stage. There's no question about that. You're right. You have, a, you have an incredible gift. Um, do you also cook in the kitchen? I mean, can, you, can you burn some pots? You know, I'm not a, a cook by the, the sense of uh, who's very creative. I do what I need to do to survive. Okay. You know, I'm single now, so... I tend to, yeah, when I am home, heard that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm home, I, I generally go with whatever is there, you know, okay. and I'll just throw something together. Now, if you were trying to impress a young lady, the woman of your dreams, <laughs> mentally, physically, and spiritually, she was just perfect for you. Uh -huh. I mean, what, what would you whip up in the kitchen? I don't know, you know, uh, that'd be a hard one. Oatmeal, I'm really good at. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I'd have to take her somewhere to... <laughs> all right, uh, all yeah. right. Indian Man March. Yes. Uh, as you know, the women are getting together this weekend for the Million Women March in Philadelphia. Sure. Uh, and I think it's a great thing. Uh, in terms of the Million Man March, though, what, uh, first of all, your perceptions of that, and did it meet or exceed or fall short of your expectations? Well, I'm not so sure I had expectations. I think uh, there were, I had mixed emotions about it, 
one of the good things about it I thought was the coming together of young men, African American men to come together and try to improve our situation economically, uh, putting emphasis on the family, right. strengthening ourselves that way, uh, respecting our women, you know. Um, you know, those kind of things I thought were, were excellent. The only criticism, if you will, that I had of it was uh, perhaps the, the media's attempt to make it sound like something negative or something not good. Um, you know, the fear of Farrakhan. And I think that has to do with the misperception of Islam, you know, that uh, the media accepts him as the representative of Islam for African Americans. Okay. And I think that there are leaders who practice the religion of Islam, such as W. Dean Muhammad, you know, who uh, represent Islam under the term Islam. Okay. And I think if people were... Where do you fall in that? Well, I, I, I believe in Islam. I believe all Muslims are Muslims. However, I think that... Uh, for me, W.D. Muhammad has probably been the best represent, representative to say under the Islamic umbrella, okay. uh, which is you know the coming together of people together, tolerance for all people, mm -hmm. regardless of color, right. you know. Um, but the other side of it is, I'm very happy that that march was there and it came off to inspire people to want to do good. Right. So, I'm like always mesmerized by how musicians and, and you in particular can come up with the tunes, the melodies, and also the way you're able to take influences of the Latin culture, the African culture, weave them in beautifully. For instance, that one song, don't laugh at me now, but the one song you start out and go, way oh, way oh, wow, 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 way oh. Now, now how, how does that come to you? You know, I can't take credit for that. Okay. Actually, my brother, I believe he's here somewhere, but he actually came up with that. He wrote, co-wrote that song, and he came up with the African chant. Okay. You know, it was, uh, we hope that it meant some rejoicing which is what we wanted to do. The title of this song is My Angel. And um, he came up with this idea. He kept hearing, uh, uh, I can't remember the group from South Africa, Black Mambazo, I believe it is. Okay. And, uh, and you know, they used to go out and have uh, chants, you know, chant and through their music, rejoicing music. And so we made an attempt to imitate that. Yeah. I mean, how do you come up with new music? I mean, what's your, do you have a formula? For me, it comes in different ways. You know, at times I consider it a keyboard and play, you know, just play what I'd like to play uh, and hear it. Sometimes I hear it in my head, you know, and I'll remember it. Sometimes I'm driving in my car and I have a little micro cassette and I'll sing my, uh, melodies into it. And then later on, I'll come home and work with it, with that melody. Okay. But it comes different ways. Sometimes it's also collaborations, you know, writing with my brother, other people as well. Okay, your brother so, writes too. Yeah, he's, he's a writer and producer. His name is Fareed. Okay. And he's produced my last uh, five albums with me. Um, as, as some of you might know, they've gone gold, you know, four of them have gone gold, so. And, and that's something to be very, very proud of. And, and the thing that I'm more proud of, though, in terms of, you know, what you've achieved beyond the gold, the recognition, and, and the fame, is, is the fact that, you know, you're a brother that's exercising self-determination. Yes. And what I mean by that is, you know, your own production studio. Yes starting to distribute and produce all the artists. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we uh, have owned our own studio for quite some time now. We have two, one in New York, one in L.A., and now we're at the stage where we're beginning to, uh, uh, the beginning stages of starting our own label. Uh, we're just now signing a new deal with a new label that gives us the freedom to be able to do that now right. and bring in other artists finally. It's taken a few years for us to do it. We've made attempts at it in the past, and it, we weren't as successful because we didn't have the support from the the uh, company we were with at the time. But uh, that seems to be changing now. Okay. So I'm very excited about that. That's great. Um, I know that you got to get back to the hotel. I'm going to hold yeah. you up too long. So what I would like to do, mm -hmm. if you could squeeze in a few minutes, sure. I'd like to, some concluding things, because we didn't talk about your fan club. We didn't talk about sure. new <laughs> CDs. We didn't talk about the next tour. Some other things we want to get into and share with your fans out there. So uh, we can, you can do your thing, and then we can okay. meet you a little later on. And con conclude this interview. This is great. Sure. All right. Thank you. Okay.